Well, Frank, it's, uh, thank you for coming to uh, Maryland's RSL today uh, to talk to us a little bit about your involvement with Parramatta Rugby Union. And, uh, and I've got a few questions to ask you. And, uh, I guess the first one is, uh, how long have you been actually been involved with Parramatta Rugby and a little bit about your playing career when you played for West and Gordon to start with? Well, I played with West 1946 to 48 and Gordon 49 to 53. And I've been involved with Parramatta firstly through the juniors uh, when the 1960 Parramatta Juniors were formed, thanks to Eric Tweedale. So your uh, first association with Parramatta Rugby was through the Colts, or when you went yes, to the grade? Or? Yes, 19, 1970, the Colts were, that was the inaugural year for the Colts. But uh, New South Wales Sydney Rugby Union didn't want anything to do with them, really. The Juniors were sponsoring the, the Colts, and uh, it was mainly due to Bob Allen, who was the elder brother of Trevor Allen. He, uh, well, he pushed hard to, to form the Colts, and uh, eventually they came, to, came into existence in 1970. Par Parramatta had, we had the two, two Colts teams there. Bob James coached the first grade and I helped him and coached the second grade. And that uh, that was the inaugural year. I got got the Colts launched. Nineteen uh, nineteen uh, seventy one. I I went across to the senior body and uh, was coaching reserve grade there under Rod Phelps. There was quite a bit of resistance to Colts in the senior club for the first year until they saw it actually functioning. They, a lot of people in the, the senior people in the, in the club didn't think it would, would take on. But, uh, well, I, I thought it would. <laughs> and Bob Jones thought it would, so that was the main thing. And when, once we got it off the ground, it, it was eventually, you know, in a couple of years, it was part of the senior club administered by the senior club but those first couple of years it was through the juniors. Okay just if we can take sort of a step back in time so you're playing how did you get involved in rugby so through Fort Street Boys High School? I yes, yes so I went to Fort Street and uh, well the first couple of years there I could well I, I could run a bit and uh, we put it to have a Coach, one of the two teachers, science teacher, Ollie, Ollie Worth. He was the New South Wales hurdles champion at the time. He was he was very good, getting us interested in athletics. And I took athletics as a sport for the first couple of years, the winter sport, and cricket in the summer. But uh, from the, from me in the, the third year. Uh, because I could run a bit, they, the football coach <laughs> took so me into playing rugby. You're Shanghai, yeah. <laughs> so you played yeah. in the back set if you could run. Yes, yeah, so I played on the, on the wing. The first match played for Ford Street was against Sydney High, who also played in the GPS competition, and they had quite a senior team. The uh, winger I was marking was a fellow called Fred Card. Now, I was 14. He was 19, <laughs> and he was the uh, CHS and GPS hurdles champion. <laughs> so you got stood up a couple of times? <laughs> well, a couple of times. <laughs> but, uh, that, that was introduction to rugby, but uh, unfortunately my father got ill then, and I, I left school at the end of third year, and uh, next year, Petersham. Subbies, but I got in touch with me and uh, I played with them in the, the Burke Cup. So you grew up in Petersham? Yeah, I grew up in Petersham. About 400 yards from Fort Street School, actually, was this one. Yeah. And I was always the last there. 
That's always the way. It's a little bit like Parramatta. <laughs> they used to come from the Blue, Blue Mountains before me. <laughs> and then uh, I played a season with the, the, the Bird Cup. We got to the grand final, but we didn't win. And then you went to West after that? Well, after that, uh, I, I was 15 then, and they, uh, there was no subbies played from 1940 onwards. There was no grade either. Oh, because of the war? Because of the war. It was all suspended. So I didn't play any football uh, then, but when I was just turned 17, I went into the Navy and uh, they had rugby down there at Flinders Naval Depot. That was a great experience for me because I I played inside centre there and the 5'8 was Brian Bevan. I don't know whether you've heard of Brian Bevan, but if you look in the uh, uh, records for English Rugby League, I think he owns, he's still credited with the most tries of Okay. 400 odd tries in English Rugby League. Well, he was just a freak. <laughs> he played 5-8 and I played inside centre and I never scored so many tries in my life. I just followed him through. So that was a very... So what did he pass to you? <laughs> well, he was very generous. <laughs> but he was a, a character. He was only 18 at the time and uh, he was nearly bald. He had no teeth. <laughs> He's skinny as a rag. And it looked as though he, you know, if you tackled him, he'd disintegrate. <laughs> but he was he was a genius. He yeah. he just he proved that later on. But uh, anyhow, I, I had the first benefit of Brian Bevan as a fighter. He played on the wing in league in in England after the war, and, uh, and he holds all the records over there. But, so is he the best player you've ever played with? Well, he probably is. Either him or Trevor Allen, I'd say. I never played with Ray Price, but yeah. I, I admired Ray Price. I thought he was terrific, but I thought Trevor Allen was just about a perfect outside centre. It wasn't, wasn't big, but tough as nails. and. Uh, the uh, first year I played with Gordon, it was a young fellow, Roy Morell, played on the wing. And I scored, I think he scored 15, 16 tries in the season. Outside Trevor. But uh, the next year Trevor went to the league in England and Roy, Roy Morell hardly scored a try in the next season. Okay. It, uh, I, I think. You know, well, well Trevor proved himself with the uh, 40, 47, 48 Wallabies. He, he was the, the youngest on the, on the team. And, uh, well, when uh, the, the, the captain broke his leg and he was out for the rest of the tour and they, they made Trevor captain. So Proved they thought something of. Yeah, he must have been really good. He was. I, I think he he's always been my ball mark for for an outside centre in here. Well, lots of other good players, of course. Uh, Frank, uh, just a, uh, I know you've talked about your, your your playing career, but I'd be interested in the, the positions you played. So you started as a wing, and then at West and Gordon, you uh, played number eight, and yeah. and, and, and First, played first grade for them, or both teams, or both yeah. clubs? Yes, yeah, so I played 47, 48, I played first grade number eight with West. I had a <coughs> coach there, uh, Chap Chapman, he was a, he, had, he only had one arm, but he was a test referee, and <laughs> somehow he, he thought I'd, I'd be better at uh, in the back row of the, the forward, so he put me there. And the first game I played there, I wonder what I'd struck. I was, <laughs> I was under the old rucking laws, and that meant 
when you tackled, you had to release the ball, and then it next had to be played with the foot. So, <laughs> if you happened to be on the ground, when the ball hit the ground, it uh, was rather, rather a dangerous position to be in. So, uh, in the backs, I didn't really come across that, but in the forwards, it, certainly so. It, uh, <laughs> certainly so. But uh, no, I played number eight there, and then. Well, got married at the end of '48, and went to live at Chatsford. And in those those days, nobody had a car. It was all public transport, and I didn't fancy continuing with West from Chatsford, so I went up to Gordon and got a game there. I finished up. I played second grade with with Gordon, number eight. I thought I was good enough to play first grade, but unfortunately, unfortunately, they had Brian Johnson there playing number eight. He was the Wallaby player, number eight. He was six feet three and uh, GPS and CHS sprint champion. So <laughs> I couldn't quite match that one. But uh, anyhow, I played played. Uh, well, during that season, I still played about ten first grade games because he was wasn't always available. So to that extent, it was good. But, uh, then so it, the team still won when you when you replaced him. Oh yes. <laughs> well, when I used to replace Ray Price, I used to lose. I used to feel well, I, was, I was a risk. <laughs> well, maybe number eight wasn't a key position. <laughs> and, uh, no, he's. He was, oh, everyone remembers him against the Fijians uh, doing covering tackles uh, against the flying Fijian wingers and all that sort of thing. He was really good, but unfortunately he, uh, he died very early. He went to New Guinea and uh, caught some illness up there and he died about 31. Mm -hmm. uh, not a it was a, a cruel waste that was, but um, anyhow. So you finished with Gordon in '60. Well, I, I finished the end of '53 actually, and uh, I played another game with them in 1960, <laughs> fourth grade grand final. <laughs> and uh, that was because I'd I'd been retired for some years and. Uh, I got talked into playing for the AMP in the, the subbies. And I played there at the end of the season. I ran into some good players and they asked me to come and have a game up there. So I was, I was playing in fourth grade at Gordon at uh, 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock I'd go and play with the AMP. You must uh, have a very, Bell must be a very understanding what? <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> if you had a playing career like for about 20 years then, virtually. Well, on, yeah, plus cricket in the summer. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say much more, Frank. But... <laughs> uh, and your son Robbie played for us too, so. Yeah, Rob played right through Maryland Juniors and with the Colts. And he played two seasons with the seniors. He's a 5'8", uh, was he? Well, generally, yeah, 5'8". He, he, he played number 8 in the juniors, of course I taught him to tackle. <laughs> and that was the main, main function of number 8 in those days, was, was cover tackling. That's one of the, the... The best thing I can remember in grade was <clears throat> the last game I, I played with Gordon in first grade against Manly, at Manly Oval, and Charlie Eastis made a break down the down the sideline, and I <laughs> caught him on the corner post, saved the game. How oh, good is that? <laughs> so you rem so, reminisce each time you go to Manly? Yeah. <laughs> no, the, the number eight in those days is the corner flag. As soon as, as, soon as play broke up, you know, set play broke up, you head for the corner post. You'd, that's your first initial, then you pause and see what was going on and adjust, but uh, 
if you went for the corner, you could generally pick up the outside backs when they made a break. It was a good theory. I don't know whether it still applies. as lots of other things come into the game since then. But, uh, I think Arthur Buchan was renowned for that in the Wallabies. He, he, he used to count the number of times he tackled the winger. Okay. So it, it was the, the accepted thing. You had to get the winger. It must have been fairly quick then. Uh, well, it, yeah, it had to be for number eight. And, um, oh, I, I used to represent the school at CHS in the sprints, but uh, I never, never won. <laughs> Won the sprints, but uh, was up there with them, I suppose.